this is uh, I'm going to be HA Proxy Technologies. I'm uh, demonstrating HA Proxy Enterprise Edition. Um, in this case, I'm showing two basic uh, features. We're using maps in HA Proxy to uh, route traffic and uh, using SSL termination because we have a number of features in that regard. So, uh, first thing, what is HA Proxy? Um, we are the LBAS driver in OpenStack, so if you're using OpenStack, you are using HA Proxy. Though often people will put HA Proxy in front of OpenStack in order to allow for denial of service protection is not a special reason you'd want to keep it in front so it can eat up your uh, denial of service attacks. Um, basically, HA Proxy Enterprise Edition is HA Proxy open source with uh, backported bug fixes and features from the de development branch of the open source into uh, enterprise. We have a bunch of management and security features around that, and then additionally you get uh, support, either business hour or 24-7 support for HA Proxy. Um, as noted, we have a high performance SSL stack, so we can do about a thousand uh, RSA key exchanges per second. It additionally supports uh, ECC and uh, RSA, which I'll get into more later. Um, a lot, a number of advanced security features of note in HA Proxy, namely uh, denial of service mitigation. So if you're dealing with get or post floods, some of which, uh, some features of that, which I'll mention more later. Um, we can eat tens of thousands of requests per second and send uh, JavaScript challenges, request captchas, all sorts of fancy features in that regard. The Enterprise Edition additionally comes with a SQLi and XSS protection module. So if you're interested in that, be sure to stop by and we'll talk more about that. Um, there's also a lot of routing and health, health check options. We uh, I'll talk certainly more about routing as that's what this entire, the point of this is. But we will uh, also have a number of health check options. You can do uh, HTTP requests, look for values, agent checks, uh, basically anything you can uh, think of because you can of course do scripting. So we can uh, do all, cover all of that. So next let's start talking about what maps can do here. Um, the first thing you would want to be able to do with a map is uh, move certain users to uh, certain backends. This is a little bit more of an advanced use of a map, but with the uh, HTTP request set map option, you can say have your backend set a header on a response which moves your uh, client to a higher priority backend. Um, you could have it look at cookie values to determine whether a, a specific client should be of considered a higher priority or move to a members area uh, backend versus a normal backend. There's a lot of uh, features you can do with that kind of thing. Um, now, the next thing a map can do, do is regular expressions. Basically, if you want to check, especially if you're doing things with um, user agents or you are very complex URL matches, you can uh, apply regular expressions in basically a map file and have it output values. If you're using the Enterprise Edition fingerprinting module, this is very useful because you can classify users that way. So um, next thing is uh, geolocation databases. For enterprise customers, we have a collection of scripts that can convert uh, maximize GeoIP databases into map files. And this allows you to put uh, them into HTTP headers. So you can, your backends can just check an HTTP header to find out where, your, where a client is located. Or if you're doing uh, denial of service attack protection, it is very useful to take the location and put it as part of an ACL to apply stricter rate limits to a specific location as compared to the rest of your website or the rest of uh, the world. Um, you can uh, combine it with ACLs, so you can end up with um, looking at certain URLs, especially APIs need a higher rate limit than other URLs. You can um, put it into a map, so you can uh, have all, you, all of your various URLs matched with a specific pattern. You can feed that into a map and then put that into a stick table 
and get, get a quick report of how many requests per second you have on each part of your website, um, for example. There's a lot of things you can do in that regard when you combine it with stick tables. And you can uh, basically look up any string you can fetch in HAProxy, so URLs, user agents, headers, cookies, parts of cookies can be mapped specifically to a string. So you can, um, that's very useful for uh, ACLs as, we'll, uh, as I'll note, and for categorizing clients and stick tables, and there's a lot you can do there. So before I uh, waste too much time slide, I will go to a terminal where I'm much more comfortable with anyway, and we'll show you how maps can be actually used. All right, so this is the basic use of a map of which I will demonstrate, but this is a, to give your bearings, this is a very basic front end. Basically an FE example, we are terminating SSL um, and we're with uh, sending TLS ticket keys. If you're using HAProxy Enterprise Edition, we have a module that allows you to synchronize your ticket keys across an entire cluster. So all of your HAProxy servers can decrypt a ticket from any other. Um, and I'll go into what exactly is in that directory later, but basically that is a bunch of uh, ECC and RSA certificates for it to terminate SSL with. It also lists on 80 on the same port. Um, we can, if you wanted to redirect from HTTP to HTTPS, or uh, only allow HTTPS in certain parts of a website, there are certain there are easy rules that can be added for that. Um, and the next rule is just I'm trying to demonstrate how to use uh, ACLs with uh, maps. So in this case, I'm denying the request if the uh, map file returns the word block. Um, in this case, I just have a single domain for that, but it'll return a 403. And finally, I have use backend, um, be underscore, and then the output of the map. With the, uh, the word default means that by default, it will return um, the word default if some random host header is presented and it's not located in the map. Um, of note is that this particular string is, is the same format that is used in logs and HTTP headers. So anything that you can do with, this, with a collection of um, values of this, you can put into HTTP headers, you can put into logs. So if you want to have a country code um, entry in your log or you want to have a marker of what part of the website you're using that is easily accessible, um, and it's going into a, and it, it's going into one of the following backends. Each of these backends, I just have a single uh, backend server for this example, but um, it, they're just doing basic HTTP checks, nothing particularly fancy. But there's a lot more in backends we can get into and especially using maps for uh, server persistence. So if you're interested in that kind of thing, be sure to stop by and we'll go into more detail. Now, to show an example of it um, in use before we continue. In this case, this rule, we can uh, make a request for image.example or API.example and it will go to the correct backend without actually having to specify the particular backends in the configuration itself. So just to give an idea of what the uh, specific map file looks like, we have a list of uh, maps, so we have a list of uh, domains on the left side, and we have a list of um, output strings that will be used for the back end on the right. Um, because this is stored in an EB tree, EB tree format inside of HAProxy, you can have uh, millions of entries, um, especially the values you can put in there are IP addresses or IP ranges, so you can have, uh, especially from a GeoIP map, you will end up with uh, ranges, you can have uh, millions of them, or strings, or regular expressions, or even binary values if you want to match specific backends. And then um, the output. 
especially if you're not interested in this and all you're doing is looking to block a bunch of uh, IP addresses or a bunch of patterns, you, can, uh, ver you do not need the second column and instead it's an ACL file, which works exactly the same way. Um, if you're using HAProxy Enterprise Edition, you can uh, add an update LB section to the configuration and you can spe give it a URL and it will automatically handle updating this uh, URL across your entire cluster. So to show the a uh, little bit about how exactly um, SSL termination works, which I'll uh, go into a little bit more detail in later. Um, in this case, this is what I just passed to HAProxy, the search directory and its configuration, and it's reading up these six different files. Um, for the purposes of uh, the demonstration, as uh, I, each of these only have a single common name, so when I requested api.example, it picked the api.example file. Um, it also understands that there's a .ecdsa and .rsa file, so in this case, because of my uh, cipher priorities, which I'll mention more later, it automatically picked the elliptic curve certificate instead of the RSA ones, because it's, that's substantially faster. So another uh, thing of note it supports there is you can add .ocsp, and you can have OCSP stapling in HAProxy, which is uh, very useful. And if you're interested in that kind of thing, I have some shell scripts for Enterprise Edition to uh, automatically update your OCSP stapling and uh, ensure that your clients know that your cert is actually valid. So to go over some of the, uh, a few basic uh, th things of note in an HAProxy configuration which are uh, often interesting and overlooked, I have uh, NBProc2 here. So if you're terminating a lot of SSL, you will want to make sure that HAProxy will run on a number of cores. Um, the stat sockets are separate, but if you've uh, noticed in front of our booth here today, I've had an example of uh, Grafina, Grafana running uh, InfluxDB and uh, graphing stats, for combining both of these uh, processes together, and you can combine from your entire cluster. So if you're interested in that, um, I have a guide for installing it that comes with the Enterprise Edition. Um, it's always important to set max con so that you don't, uh, it's much better to have HAProxy queue your connections if you end up under a um, massive and unexpected load rather than running out of memory. So especially when using large stick tables, that's of note. Um, CPU map will pin the uh, CPU, the HAProxy instances to specific cores. And in this case, I have the uh, networking pinned to, pinned to core three. So that is general, you generally want the uh, networking pin to a core that is on the same physical CPU as HAProxy, so that's how I have it configured there. Um, syslogging, we have, uh, I don't have too much in the way of log formats here, but we still get uh, fully featured logs with just this. Sending it to syslog, um, that includes uh, important things such as termination states. So if you're looking to debug exactly why a client got an error message, there's a very nice uh, code that'll tell you exactly what went wrong with the connection. Um, very specific timings that say exactly how long a request took and uh, which part of the request, so you can easily uh, determine exactly what's going on with your configuration. Um, don't, don't worry about this bind cipher line if you are, uh, for all the, our enterprise customers, I have an example of this. You could just copy and paste it. But basically, I'm telling it to prefer elliptic curve over RSA because that's substantially faster. I'm telling it not to use SSL. And I'm telling it that the, um, it should use a 2048 Diffie-Hellman parameter. But it's unlikely to get there because all the modern clients will have gotten picked off in the surfer li the, uh, list ahead of time. So just to give a basic idea of what I'm doing here, I have a whole bunch of uh, my uh, different backends. They're all basically identical, and there's nothing that particularly has to tag them. Um, as you may have uh, noticed, we have a recent uh, new feature of hitless reload. So if you wanted to add or to modify this configuration, we can reload HAProxy with absolutely no downtime. 
Um, but additionally, we can um, start going into the socket and we can view all of the uh, all of the uh, backends, we can actually change the addresses and port numbers. Um, if you want, that brings me probably to the uh, next point, which is you can update maps dynamically uh, via the HAProxy socket. So even if you are using the community version and using these maps, it's a simple socket command to update them, to view them, or uh, notably if you're using stick tables to view the uh, stick table values so you can uh, output all of your HTTP request rates that you logged with this kind of thing. Um, so before I get into um, showing off anything else that's uh, not particularly worthwhile, does anyone have any questions about HAProxy or anything that I've uh, blabbered on about here? Yeah, it's a eight, full feature to see. So um, by default, the LB we were we are the LBAAS driver. So if you're when you configure a uh, load balancer in the OpenStack UI. That is generally where, um, it, that's the default place for, for HAProxy. Um, we have a lot of customers, there's two other ways you can deploy it. You can either put HAProxy outside of the, uh, entire, entirely outside of the, um, OpenStack and have it um, load balanced to your various OpenStack services. The benefit of that is that you don't have any of the other, none of the other um, services get involved yet, so your logging can show your complete uh, timing that's of everything that's happened inside of OpenStack. And additionally, if you do get a denial of service attack, you're going to want to process and block the requests as close as possible to the client so that uh, you don't have them going through your entire OpenStack infrastructure before it determines the fact that the request is invalid and needs to be challenged. Uh, anything else? So I will give a quick, for anyone who did not uh, notice before, I will give a quick uh, overview of our um, Grafina dashboard. Unfortunately, I uh, don't have any data because I haven't made any requests recently. But this is uh, live. It's re this is refreshing every five seconds from uh, data that's been re that's retrieved from the HAProxy sockets. Um, in this case, I have uh, errors per backend and uh, overall request rate, but you can do almost anything in that regard that you want. Um, another thing of note, I think I removed it from this configuration uh, originally, but um, HAProxy does have a uh, status page, which is of uh, use, which is of note. You will want to. Uh, you can either have a CSV value output to view all the statuses of your individual front ends and back ends. Uh, useful, very useful for monitoring pages. And additionally, you can make uh, API calls to it. So I have example curl commands if you want to say have your. Um, maintenance infrastructure automatically disable a given backend so that you can try tests, try tests on it, put your backends into maintenance. HAProxy will redirect the traffic elsewhere. And then when you're ready, you can enable it on one, make sure it's healthy, make sure that the 2xx request rate is right from the output. And then you can uh, go through and uh, re-enable it on all of your other load balancers. Um, I think that's everything that I have to uh, yell at you about today, so if there are no further questions, thank you. <laughs>